they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not get weary. They shall mount on wings as eagles. Apostle Paul said, We behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord, and we are being changed into that same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of God Himself. It's from glory to glory, not glory to grass, not grace to grass, but grass to grace, glory to glory. Father, lift me up to the height of no return. Growth is an irreversible change in dimension. Father, cause a change within me, a change in spiritual stages, a change in my divine understanding, a change in wisdom, a change in the knowledge of you, a change in the fear of you, a change in my might, my ability to do effectively and efficiently. Father, let there be a move, let there be an increase this morning, let there be a change this morning, let there be an increase, let there be, let there be a soaring this morning, let there be a touch. I open up to your presence, I open up to your spirit. Father, let there be a greater security to my rising. As I rise, I'm not coming back any lower in the name of Jesus. As I rise, oh God and Father, open my eyes to see what routine to keep. Grant me the strength to keep the routine. Bring me the helpers that will help me give more routines. Strengthen me to keep these routines in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Pray for an increase, an irreversible increase, an irreversible change, an irreversible progress in the name of Jesus. You are rising as more mature. You are rising as more potent. You are rising more vibrant. You are rising with greater vigor in the name of Jesus. Let it be your portion. Let it be your position. Become larger and in charge. Larger and more in charge of the circumstances, of the situations that are in your control, that are in your power in the name of Jesus. Pray for Lord, your word that is coming forth in this atmosphere, whatever I have kept that is my own mindset about myself, change something about self, that whatever hindrance self has placed against me, myself has placed contrary to my growth, contrary to my increase, because of age, because of temperament, because of upbringing, Lord, bypass something that I cannot do by myself. My character may not have helped me to attain, to retain, to contain, to maintain. But Father, there is a temperament beyond the natural. When the Spirit takes over my soul, I am changed and something is being revealed. Father, take over me. Let there be a change and let there be some new revelation. In the same way you turn men to righteousness, turn some stubbornness in me to obedience. Father, help me this morning as I open up. Seek into me some dimension of righteousness that I see myself floating and, and, and walking over the waters in which I have drowned before. In the name of Jesus. Father, stir me some zeal that I may see myself buoyant over some waters of slothfulness in which I have drowned before. In the name of Jesus. Lord, raise me up in the spirit that where I have slept before, I will find myself praying. I will find myself vibrant. Where I have been at the back end of the line, I will find myself at the front end of the line. Even as your word comes for this morning, May it not just be words in my ears, Father. May it not just be words in my ears. Let it not be words in my ears. Let them become fashioned weapons within me, fashioned abilities within me. In the name of Jesus, it's your prayer. It's your prayer. Pray it as a prayer. Pray it as a request. Pray it as a desire. Let it be a desire. And God's word this morning is going to sit on it. Expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. It's a desire spiritual gift. Desire these things. Desire them. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Have this hunger. Have this desire. For that is what God is waiting to feel. That's what is waiting to feel. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to speak to us this morning about what I announced last Sunday. There is much to say to you. Please, Sunday school, make sure that we don't hear your voice a lot in this word so that I can preach alone. I want to talk to us about the mystery of the armor. The mystery of the armor whether John exalted last Sunday and I know the Lord is speaking to us extensively about this. There are words he said to me when I was in the retreat for you. And I think you need to understand this thing of the armor. I don't know how you see it, but in our days, 
we have but guns and bulletproof. So it's difficult for you to think about armor, except you who have watched epic movies. And you've never been a soldier. And so you don't know what it means when they talk about breast peace. At least only ladies know breast wear. So it's a kind of mystery too. But when Paul was preaching it, it wasn't much mystery as it is to us now. To us it's a mystery because none of you are taught how to fight war when you were in primary or secondary school. None of you left school and you went for military training as it was in Israel in those days. As long as you are of some age, you have to have at least some basics in military training. Because when war comes, young men who are vibrant will need to go for war. So it wasn't much of a mystery then as it is now. And so we have this admonish, admonition by Paul from Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, that is from verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The power there in the Greek word for power the, is kratos. So might is iskos. The power of his might, the kratos iskos. So when he says, I pray that you be strengthened with might in your inner man, he's talk, he says, I pray that you be, you, you, you be kratos iskos. Power and might. Kratos is talking about dominion. Dominion which has to do with effectiveness. So Kratos Iskus is talking about the power to be effective and efficient with dominance. So in verse 10, he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the Kratos of his Iskus. Amen. Amen. Be strong in your dominion in his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. So the armor is there for you to be able to stand. And we will read, he said, haven't done all, stand. Meaning the glory is that after the war, you should be able to celebrate. Don't win the war and die. Don't win the war and you are just, your life is at the edge. Don't win the war and your life is at the edge. Haven't done all to stand, stand. That's the meaning of to be in dominion. More life. So for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, having done all, now he said, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, having withstood all, to stand. So you don't withstand at the end you fall. You withstand at the end you are still standing. They call it in some movie, Last Man Standing. More life. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt. About with truth. And having on the breast piece of righteousness. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. If I'm preaching to you today this message, it's not because I'm a pastor. It is because I read it many years ago, above a decade ago, and I fasted and prayed about it, and I made sure I was putting the armor. And it helped my life. And some of you may not understand what it means to have the armor, because when you read, you are just reading armor. You have never lived in a Hebrew nation. We are not in those days. These are the days of guns and bullets, not the days of swords and shields. And so it is more of a mystery to us than to them that day. Those days. So, let's start analyzing one by one. I pray the Lord help us to finish on time within the service. Otherwise, we are going to continue it. So, Apostle Paul's reason for asking you to put on the whole armor is saying, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. And some people have taken this as four categories of demonic operation. They call it against principalities. What are principalities? They call it powers. What are powers? They say level two is powers. And against rulers of darkness. Who are rulers of darkness? They say that's level three. And they say against the, that's the powers of darkness of this world. And then they, they say against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. What is spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places? And they try to explain. Well, they were not in the mind of Paul. And so they'll try to give what can sound like is what Paul is explaining. But I thank God those who are in the realm of the spirit, they understand spiritual things. Principalities is talking about people or institution who have, who have placed for themselves or made themselves rules by which everybody must abide if they have to succeed. So a principality in a village could be a bully in that village whom nobody succeeds until they answer yes to him. Bullies in class, they are principalities in the class. You won't eat until you're given their share. I'm trying to give you something that is simple enough for you to understand. Principalities in prison are prison heads, the chef to whom you pay human tax, who makes the rules. He has the modus operandi, he controls the rules. The, the, those are the principles. They set the principles by which things work. Okay? They are the determinants. Now, second, it says, against the rulers, principalities and powers, sorry, against rulers now who are rulers there are many kings who are on their seats they call them the powers a king is the one by whom power is executed where the word of the king is there is power that is scripture the authority of a land is actually headed by the king so the king is the is the person by whom the powers of the land is demonstrated now the principalities of the land are those who set the rules by which the kings operate now the rulers may not necessarily be the kings but they are the one who actually influence the decisions of the kings we would have president paul Bia as the power or the authority of the government's authority of Cameroon but we know by politics and by international legislature that the presidents of French 
colonized countries in Africa are not the rulers of the countries. It is the French government. Right as far as to the economy, without going to the back end or front end, CFA means Colonie Francaise and Afrique, French colonies of Africa. So that's what we are using as CFA. So we are still a colony. Our rule is from a distance. And what they are just placing their powers over us. So when he's talking about, he's talking about a spiritual system, not just a spiritual system, but which was also functioning in a physical world by which they were being beaten and tormented daily. The apostles were always summoned to explain what kind of gospel they are preaching. To who? To the powers of the land. So he's not just talking about spiritual power. Remember, he makes a different spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. That one is a different category now. So when he's preaching, he knows that we are wrestling with kings of cities, rulers of cities. More life. Rulers of the cities, rulers of towns, chiefs. We are wrestling against them. Jesus was wrestling against them because they said he is gaining popularity. And we, if we do not take our stand, we will lose our place in this, our union with the Roman government. So Jesus was preaching his message. He was wrestling against these principalities, against these powers of the land, and against these rulers. So he's not only talking spiritual. It's about the physical. But man, of course, has all his rulership from the realms of the spirit. More life. And so he's not only talking about spiritual opposition, but also physical opposition that would, may have its stem from the realms of the spirit or just from the minds of men. But of course, man is spirit. More life. Are we getting it clear now? I'm, I'm demythifying the issue of thinking that it's just about demonic forces. No. And so he's saying when you are arguing with man, you are not arguing with flesh and blood because the man you are arguing with is spirit. Whoever ruler you argue with, whoever chief of whatever land you are arguing with, you cannot contend with them as you are contending with flesh. Because that flesh you are arguing with is operated by by a spirit. The flesh is just a garment. You cannot be fighting with somebody and you are slapping his clothes and you say, I do it. You have to touch the person wearing the cloth. More life. So don't only see it as spiritual things. They are also physical things. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. So he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. For example, in the Presbyterian Church, the session is the principality. Huh? All right. Now, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Rulers of the darkness. Remember, he said rulers of the darkness of this world. You know, because of the use of the word darkness, many people only equate it now exclusively to the spirituality. But it says in John, 1 John chapter 5, he said, The whole world lieth under the sway of the evil one. He said, The whole world lies in darkness, and you are the light of the world. So the rulers of the darkness of this world, they are the rulers of the darkness that is in oppression. For example, in the economy, those who try to master the economy in a way that men are going to be enslaved, they are the rulers of the darkness of the economy. Those who are trying to print the COVID vaccine in the name of, of, of keeping people under health security, whereas they are going into a population control, they are the rulers of the darkness as far as the world's health system against men is concerned. The Bill Gates and all his cohort, they are the rulers of that darkness of the oppression. Praise God, this morning I had a vision, I had a dream, and the, the oppression of the vaccine had a storm and it was halted and cancelled. And, and I heard people hailing, there was a hail to the men of God who had led this charge. You don't think these things are happening just by chance. Pastor Chris was raised to contend with these issues. Amen. Journalists, there are journalists who were raised to bring out the data. All of the hidden data about those who were tested, those who had died, whose, whose, whose data were hidden. There are journalists who came out and exposed all of it 
and said that they are not telling you they came and released all from the hospital's archives. Men of God have been on their knees that this agenda will not be fulfilled in our time. Let it be after we have gone, but not in our time. Let's not read the book of Revelations and we give the devil power. No, some things are not for our time. May what happen when you don't come out my life. So men have contended. As long as we are here, our duty is to be large and in charge. We should be able to decide the times at which some things should happen. More life. So you need to understand what it means by the rulers of the darkness of this world. I've tried to explain to you. Medicine is supposed to be for the good of mankind. But those who rule in the darkness of this world take the medical applications and turn it against man himself. That is the darkness of this world. The rulers of the light of this world will discover the medicines and use it for the good of all men. Praise God. And so, where, what are you fighting for? On which side are you standing? Now it says, we also wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. This one is not physical wickedness. Spiritual wickedness in high places. High places are not just the thrones. High places are heights. Physical realms embodied by spiritual authorities as well as spiritual realms governed by spiritual authorities. There are some people in authorities who are possessed by hosts of demons. And you can think they are the one making decisions, but it's not them. It's a whole cohort. And as well, he's aware of astral realms. Places, cities, nations, at point in time, have clouds that cover them, which are clouds of darkness. But the rule and the position of sons of God is to disperse that cloud. Amen. Amen. So David said, let the Lord arise and let his enemies be scattered. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. Hallelujah. So, these are all the things we contend with. So, if the mayor of the city of Boya is, is, is for Jesus, is for the church, glory. But if he's not for the church and is opposing the preaching of the gospel, we were built to contend, not to submit. More life. They did not submit the preaching of the gospel to the laws of the state that says they should not preach in the name of Jesus. They said, who should we obey? You men or God from above? After they are beating them. Then this Gamaliel advised them. They said, move and leave them so. Because the courage these men have is not from below. Then Gamaliel said, if... If truly they are from God, then no matter how hard we try, we can't stop them. But if they are not from God, look at the other ones that have died. Let's just keep on this persecution, it will die. And it did not die. Amen. And so they make the withstanding of the authorities a duty, not the backing off. Praise God. Hallelujah. So ghost towns cannot close the church. Ghost towns cannot close the church. Goes down, cannot close the church. Amen. More life. So, having known these things, we wrestle with more seriously is spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places, in high places. It said, Take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Not all the days are evil. We can talk about the evil days. But there are some days you are going to be at liberty, at ease. And there are other days the atmosphere is going to be a la kind. But he said, if you are putting on the whole armor, you will be able to withstand in the evil day because you are ready at all time. Apostle Paul says, soldiers don't get themselves involved in civilian activity. That's why everywhere you see them go in their uniform, they are carrying their guns. You don't see a female soldier carrying a purse on duty. That's a civilian attire. And so as a believer, 
at all the time you must be ready for fire prayer you must be ready to declare scripture no matter the circumstance so apostle paul is going to show us the things that you do that make you apt and prepared for war at all times hallelujah god is never taken at surprise you too should never be taken at a surprise Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, your waist. Your loins is your waist. Girt about with the belt of truth. It's belt that you use to tie your waist. And so, why do you tie your waist? Why do you tie belt? Eh? Yes, to keep your trouser in place. And not only trouser, gown. You guys tie belt on gown now. Why do you tie belt on the gown? Eh? To give you shape. So that the thing is not bungolo bungo. At least you are looking fit and attractive. Do you tie the belt up here? Do they tie gown belt up here? Do they tie it on the lap? Where do they tie it? Around the belly, let's just call it loin because there are some men whose loin are here. We know <laughs> this is where their belt is on the navel. So let's just say from the navel <laughs> down to the waist is loin. Praise God. Okay, their loin is here. No, but at least it comes, it, it, it rolls up here. <laughs> Praise God. So you tie to keep your dress in shape. And what is your dress? What is your dress? The cloth you put on, what is it? Spiritually, your dress is, they call it in, in scripture, garment. Garment in spiritual meaning has to do with an anointing. Anointing has to do with the power from God given to you to operate something or a duty. Remember he talks about Kratos Iskus. Kratos Iskus comes upon a believer as a garment. It's it's something that you put on. You will hear, and the spirit of the Lord came upon. In the realm of the spirit, it's like a garment you put on to be able to execute an assignment. Before a lawyer goes to court to judge the case, there is a cloak they put on that makes them to be recognized. It gives themselves an awareness of who they are, and it gives the person who is looking at them the awareness of who they are within the court. It, 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 it's a demo, it's a reflection of the powers that is upon them. Let a small, tiny woman go and stand in the, in, on a road trying to control the traffic, somebody will knock her down. But let her pull, put on her police dress, no matter how tiny and, 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 and toothpick she is, as she raises her hand, the camion will stop. Because there's a garment upon that is reflected and symbolic of the authority. Yeah. Disobey that garment, you will face the law of the nation, not even her. Yeah. She will yeah. shift one corner, you will pass. Yeah. But doing Cameroon is different, but now that's how you go to jail. In Australia, they say they will remove your points. And they will remove your points and sometimes seize your, seize your driver's license. And you have to wait for months. Just a small, tiny woman who raised her hand and you do not obey. Just because she will put in her uniform, they take her driver's license. Can she seize it by herself? No. By her power, she cannot. But she's representing a government. Hallelujah. Praise God. When the lawyer puts on her cloak, she's representing a system, not just a person. So when God gives upon you Kratos Iskus, you are not just representing yourself, but the kingdom of God present. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's why when we conduct deliverances, the devil has no legal right to come after us. We didn't come in our name. We were sent. Let him come after. We have an advocate. We know the fear. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, you have to understand what it means by take on the whole armor. I say when you put on garments, you, when you put on the belt, it's to keep your garment in shape so that it doesn't fall off. That garment is an anointing. That garment is also character. Physically, a garment is a character. Remember, I preached about what is in the name. And when I talk about character, I say character is not just your fashion. 
character is also your role that you play in a situation in time like movie characters praise god Hallelujah. so it covers all scope so with the belt of truth sound scripture sound mind in the word of god the belt of truth 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 jesus said your word is true john 17 17 father sanctify them with your word for your word is truth so the word of god has to keep you in shape is the word of god that will keep your anointing in shape is the word of god that will keep the spiritual abilities that you have built the things you can do for you to be able to do them in a way that the devil will not accuse you praise god so if a man of god is prophesying everybody will come under that temptation of using the prophetic to manipulate people but you have to keep the belt of truth to be true to yourself and to be true to the person to whom you are ministering so that the devil doesn't take occasion of a gift that is within you from God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So first of all, the first armor is truth. Because if the belt is not in place, everything will fall off. Everything will fall off. Everything about armor has something that you tie. And truth is that element by which everything of the armor is held in place. If you cannot be true to yourself in your service, you will only be a fool to yourself. Because you cannot fool God. You can fool men, but you cannot fool God. And if you are fooling men, you will only fool them for a time. And when you are done fooling them, you will become the fool. So when they were full, when you were fooling them, they are not fools. The fool you will become after they realize how much you have fooled them will make you the real fool. So you are the one who is the fool. So anybody who is fooling anybody that are under them, manipulating them, I wonder how angels are looking at you. So the first thing you have to do to yourself is consider no manipulation as far as your official duty in the body of Christ is concerned. Let God be true. Let all men be liars. So that is the meaning of the belt of truth. Gehazi thought that his master was stupid. Is Gehazi right? Who went to collect the offerings? From Naaman, right? I must have a man in so they did die like she didn't see you from Nautica. He the went and he became the real fool, right? To Judas, Jesus was really stupid. The guy, you know, they know wise. He was stealing from the treasury. Stealing. Steal so they go cross boundary. He was very wise financially. He could have been a very good financial minister, minister of finance. He went to the extent of thinking that he could fool them to give him money that he would sell Jesus to them. Because he knew that they cannot kill Jesus. They have tried to stone him many times and he just passed lies, come on. So to him, he was fooling them. He said, 30 pieces of silver, now give you him. When they finally apprehended Jesus, he said, Mad, now me, I sell you. And the devil came in. So he became the fool. Not Jesus the fool, not the disciples the fool, not the pharisees and teachers of the lord the fool he became the fool and who took over him when you be the fool you become the food for the devil you cannot withstand in the day of adversity because you are too full enough to be able to stand but i think when peter was denying jesus he wasn't when he was saying master i'll go with you he wasn't fooling jesus he meant it from his heart so even the day he denied jesus he was not intentionally his temperament overtook him, and when he realized himself, who did he run back to? He ran back to the same God and said, I've denied him, confessing himself and falling down. And what happened? Jesus still gave him the bishopric of the church. So he wasn't fooling Jesus. So never manipulate anyone in your service. Never fool anyone in your service because God is watching you from above. Hallelujah. Be true in everything. When you are true to your cause, God will defend you, irrespective of your storm, 
irrespective of your shortcoming. As long as you are true to your cause, the defense of God will show up when you stumble. Who is with me here? Praise God. So the first thing to get the defense, defense of God is to be true to your cause. Even when you stumble at your own shortcoming, even when you stumble at your own weakness, the host of heaven will show up for you. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4, I have never seen a God from beginning to end who rouses himself for them that wait on him. God rouses himself for you as long as you are true to your cause. Hallelujah. But you can't fool him. You can't fool him. That was the case of Saul. Saul thought he could fool God. He can't fool God. David knows he can't fool God. He has circumstances, shortcomings, and even when he stumbles, God shows up for him. Hallelujah. Even when Absalom rose up to take the kingdom, God, he didn't even fight. He said, don't fight. His head, he the Absalom, he said, God caught up in a tree. So his tree who fought for David. Hallelujah. Amen. Your God will fight for you as long as you stay true to your cause. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, he says, stand there for having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. Guys, how many of you used to feel like you have power after you must have done some push-ups? You feel like you can box. <laughs> you feel your chest. Ladies, how many of you feel like you are up there when you have one push-up? How does push-up feel? We know about Jake Chess now. How are you guys making us if we don't know these things? Who doesn't know Jake Chess? When a young girl just starts rising from puberty, now then they do Jake Chess now. You guys don't know Jake Chess? Am I alone? Why do you Jake the Chess? Are they? <laughs> the breast piece that a soldier wears in front makes them feel brave. Hallelujah. It makes them feel apt. And remember, the first position to which the sword of the enemy comes it's to your chest. The sword is always going down from the face to the chest, right down to the waist. Hardly do they go to the feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, when you wear the breastpiece, first of all, it makes you feel bravery. You feel your bravery. The I can. The I'm apt. Second, it's going to defend you against the stretched forth sword which you could not put away. When it meets you, it will stomp but on your breast breastplate. Are we together? Yes. It protects your chest, it protects your heart, it protects the bow. In fact, let's just say your bowels. So for a soldier, what that is the importance of the breast breastplate. For the believer. What will be that breastplate of righteousness? What is righteousness? Some people will say righteousness means right standing with God. That's theology. In this context, what is righteousness? First of all, right heart. That's number one. Right heart. Right heart. What did I say? Right heart. The right heart. And not just the right heart. The righteous man is the man who does the works of God. Righteousness is the act of doing the works of God. Let the battle of the enemy meet you doing the work of God. Are you catching this mystery? A righteous man to be righteous means to do like God, with God. So you're in right standing with God. Praise God. So we are righteous not because of our works, but because Jesus does like God, with God. And so we are righteous with him, because of him. More life. Righteousness is the activity of doing 
the works of God. So righteous could be an adjective. Righteousness, I don't know how we put it in language, help me. Now, adverb on a verb. Praise God. I know, no, but understand me. It's, it's the doing. Righteousness is all about the works of God, the execution. So he's walking in righteousness means he's walking in the execution of divine works. Praise God. Hallelujah. So your activity in the word of God, in the command of God, in itself is a breast piece that shields you from the sword of the enemy. Let me bring it to what you can understand. And if an idol mine is the devil's workshop. So in that, in, that, in, in that sense, when you are out of activity, you become civilian in your mindset. So Apostle Paul says, be ready in and out of season to do the command of God. That's why as a believer, keep yourself busy with prayer. Keep yourself busy meditating on the word of God. Hallelujah. In so, whenever the evil one strikes Whenever the devil strikes with his suggestion, you will be able to withstand. Praise God. You don't only act by physical activity. You also act in the command of God by mental activity. Praise God. How many of you know that you can stay in intercession, praying for someone in a distant land, and deliverance is taking place, but you are not shaking from where you are standing, or from where you you are laying down? How many of you have experienced that before? So you are in action, things are happening in the realm of the spirit and in the physical, but physically you are not moving. So the spiritual activity of righteous, the activity of righteousness is not only just physical, but spiritual. You can be physically immobile, but spiritually on duty. So what Apostle Paul is saying is that you should be instant in prayer. He said, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, continue instant in prayer, Romans 12, 12. Continue instant in prayer. Every time a thought gets into you, be at work. Be at work. Mentally be at work. When you are at work, when the devil sends for the sword, he will tap on that breast piece of your righteousness and will not penetrate to touch the personality or the man himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you catching that? Yes, sir. So part of the ammo is that you have to put yourself on activity constantly. Amen. So when the church is not engaging in constant activity, church activity, there's going to be some dwindling. So all of those who say, must are church, church, church every day, they are dull and they don't understand the mystery of the physical operation of the church. So the church has to ask activity every day. What did I say? By scripture. Acts chapter 2, they met daily. Breaking bread, sharing scripture. Let's not get too busy for God. Amen. Amen. So the more we put ourselves into divine activity, the less we give the devil the opportunity to pierce us with many sorrows. Apostle Peter said, those who try to be rich in this world, by this world system, they have pierced themselves with many sorrows. If you're on activity, the sword of the devil won't pierce you with many sorrows. Let the sorrow come. Your activity and constantly meditation upon the word of God will shield you from sustaining those injuries. Hallelujah. I pray wherever you have been laxed, let strength come, let grace come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So, we have touched verse 14. We are going to look at verse 15 and the rest of the mystery of the Ammon next week Sunday. This is to save time. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. We have to save time. Praise God. Stand to your feet and appreciate God for his worth. Chance for all saints. More life.